with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Tuesday and Saturday. And we are dealing with emotional attacks, the things we're going to have to deal with from people who are totally against what they call religion. All right. God is going to sustain us, but we must lean on him at every given moment and be ready. All right. Now we're going to read from Jude chapter one, starting at verse five. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. When the Bible says strange flesh, it's referring to homosexuality. Are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet, Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have done they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complaining, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration, because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, Build up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, now Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Now, I want to share this with you. When I was praying about this last night, I got the word escala. Now, escala is not an English word. It sounded like it was a Spanish word, but I had never heard it. So 
the first thing that came to my mind was moving on up. And I saw when I heard the word in my mind, I saw in my mind's eye us as the body of Christ climbing a mountainside and we were all hooked and tied to each other. And as we were climbing, one lost their footing and started to drop. The rest of us had to sustain our weight and hold on to the rope so that the person wouldn't fall to their death. And then we helped hold them back up until they got their footing. And what God was showing me in that is that in these last days, listen to this, you guys, this is not a normal message. So listen carefully. It may not be exciting to you, but it's not normal. Let's put it like that. In these last days, Satan is not only attacking people in their sleep and their dreams and their imaginations with spirits of perversion and, and hurt feelings and emotions and all of that. What he's going to do even more than before is use people to come at you, to confront you, to accuse you. The Bible says Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And I feel like God is saying that is going to be turned up several volumes because anything he can do to discourage you. And one thing that is very discouraging to any human being is when our feelings get hurt. When somebody comes against us, that hurts. When somebody accuses of us of doing something we did not do, that hurts. And I bind the devil's I bind the devil's assignment against God's people in the name of Jesus. But I am telling you to be aware. Be aware. Be wary. Be watchful. What I want to share with you is when they talk about putting on the armor of God so you can withstand against the fiery darts of the wicked one. One of the ways of putting on the armor is as soon as you wake up in the morning and you ask God to bless your day, ask God to shield your emotions. Let whatever comes at you bounce off of you like water off of a duck's back. Ask God to open your eyes and help you recognize the attacks of the enemy so that you don't internalize what the devil is trying to do to you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Also, that God will help you not go back at them with your mouth, not retaliate, not go into a defense mode. Because when you go into a defense mode, you're giving credence to what the enemy is accusing you of. And when you're not guilty of something, you don't have to defend yourself. Picture what Jesus did when they started questioning him. When they asked him questions, what did he say? Thou sayest. In other words, well, that's what you're saying. But he did not defend himself, did he? When Moses was confronted by Corey and all of the guys that were coming against him, that's what the Bible referred to in this chapter, the gainsaying of Corey. When he came against uh, Moses talking smack like, you know, you think you all that because you a man of God. I'm bringing it to today's words, okay? You think you all that because you man's God. But let me tell you, you ain't the only one can hear. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. You know, we're just as important as you. Who made you? The, you know, yeah. So anyway... What Moses' response to that, because you're going to start getting this. I'm warning you now. Get ready. What Moses' response was, at 3 o'clock, I'm just putting out a number, tomorrow afternoon, we will meet, and I will shut my mouth and let God determine who's who. And what's what?
did not say one mumbling word against him. Just like the Bible said, the angel didn't even bring a railing accusation. Just the Lord rebuke you. Put it on the Lord. When you know you're going through stuff like that, you put it on the Lord. The battle is the Lord's, not yours. You don't waste your time with spiritual bullies. You don't waste your time defending yourself and making yourself look right in front of the public. If you look like a little uh, uh, wimp, if you look like a little flunky, guess what? It's worth it for Jesus' sake because the very ones that are snickering now will come running to you later when they get into a crisis they don't know what to do about because they know you got a connection with God. How do they know? They watched you in moments of conflict. They watched you in moments of problems and trials. They watched you when you were being challenged unworthily. You didn't do anything wrong, but you were being treated as if you had. And they saw how you handled it. They're going to come to you, baby. They might be snickering now, but they're going to come running later. Because some of you are the only Bible many people will read. So I want to say this to you. Be very careful. Don't be surprised if your relatives come at you. Don't be surprised if people start avoiding you. They don't get that they're being used by the enemy, that something about you is starting to get on their nerves. They don't get it's a spiritual thing going on. Wickedness in high places, principalities, all that crap is going on. And it's meant to bring down God's people. See, the Bible says, this is, this is how the devil will attack. The Bible says on the flip side of that, the joy, the joy, J-O-Y, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Satan on the other side wants to steal our joy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, when he comes to kill your joy, the reason for that is because it will weaken you. It will weaken your resolve if you allow it, if you keep letting him get you on your blind side. It's so like, whoops, uh, side head didn't see me coming, didn't you? Uh-huh, yeah, you didn't see me coming. Whoops, up, side head, I got you again. Uh-huh, yeah, I got you off guard. Now look at you, showing your royal behind. Call yourself a Christian. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to weaken your resolve He's trying to get you to the point where you get caught up in the frenzy. So instead of turning to God, he wants you to turn to your own fleshly ways and start acting a fool. Start talking like a fool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he wants you to neutralize your effectiveness as a Christian, as a representative, as an ambassador of Christ, he wants you to neutralize your representation. So when people look at you, they're like, he ain't about nothing. She ain't, look at that. She ain't nothing but a joke. Look at that. Did you see how she reacted when so-and-so cussed her out? Yeah, you heard what came out of her mouth, didn't you? <laughs> and she called herself a Christian. Anyway... T, 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 T. Yeah, that's what Satan's trying to do. But see, you have got to be careful not to get caught up, not to let your feelings, your pride, your image, your reputation, worrying about what people think about you or say about you. That should have no importance. If it has too much importance right now, that's where you need to pray. You need to pray that bad boy down. That's old Jack trying to come up out the box. You slam that lid down in prayer. You bind that sucker and ask God to give you all you can use from the Holy Ghost 
to be all you can be. Okay? So you make sure that you're watchful. The Bible says, be swift to hear and slow to speak. See, some of us want to run off at the mouth. We got a whole lot we can say, but it's not going to bring God any glory. And it ain't going to make you look good. You hear me? I remember one time I was at the shop. Now we're going to have a testimony at the end of this message pertaining to it. Uh, but I remember when I was at the shop, that's the salon. I was, you know, the Lord called me vocationally to do hair. So here I am at, uh, getting ready to go to the hair salon. And before I went, I was reading the word and the Lord led me to a scripture. And in the scripture, it was dealing with being attacked for no reason and handling it God's way. It was a warning. And I'm thinking, well, Lord, nobody's coming against me. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, does that mean somebody going to come against me today? Okay, Lord, shield my heart, get my mind right, keep my mouth shut, help me handle it your way. I was able to cover that bad boy in prayer. That's another form of putting on the armor of God. So I get to the salon and immediately one of the hairdressers blames me and fronts me off in front of people of doing something. I didn't even know what she was talking about. And I just went on doing hair. I didn't deal with it. I didn't discuss it. I didn't defend myself. I just did hair. And I said, Lord, because you equipped me and you prepared me ahead of time, I'm not even feeling upset. Whoa, this is a miracle here. Because I know me and my emotions. I was like, thank you, Lord, for the warning. When God has a chance to prepare you for the attacks before you get out there, it's like wearing a raincoat, galoshes, uh, a leather hat, umbrella, gloves. Can no rain, can no storm get on you. You won't get a drop because you're covered, baby. You won't feel a bit of pain. It won't bother you a lick. That's right. It won't shake you, move you, or quake you. You're just as chill as a cucumber. What you doing? Chilling. What you doing? Chilling in the peace of the Lord. That's right. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, not on you. Get your mind off you and you'll be all right. You hear me? You keep yourself, keep your mind on the word, keep your mind on the Lord. You make sure you cover yourself in prayer. And in these last days, you got to overdouse yourself. You got to keep it coming. Keep those prayers coming all day long. You're at the job, whisper a little quickies. Lord, cover me, Lord. I see attitude, Lord. I bind all this in the name of Jesus. I will not be moved. Use the word of God. I will not be moved in the name of Jesus. Right. The war rise up against me and this I will be confident. I mean, you just go on and quote the word and pray. Pray the word. Do whatever you got to do. Bind the enemy. Shut it down. Shut down your own pride. Bind your own pride. Whatever you got to do. Because I'm going to tell you, in these last days, you will see some stuff jumping off and you'll be like, what? Where did that come from? Straight from hell, baby. Using human beings right in your vicinity. Human beings in your family. Human beings on your job. Human beings between hither and thither. And you'll be sitting there, even from your churches, and you'll be sitting up there saying, oh my goodness, what is going on? No, don't even trip it. Understand, this is the season we're in. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And there's going to be some accusing going on. There's going to be some attitudes bouncing off the wall. There's going to be some words cutting sharp, cutting deep, cutting you to the core. But guess what? You got that armor. You got that shield. You got that prayer covering. You covered yourself in the word. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you. But if you're out there trying to handle life on your own, 
you're going to be kicked to the curb, baby. The Bible says, he that sows to the wind will reap the whirlwind. Do not sow to the wind. It will be to your own demise. Don't sow to the wind. Don't get caught up in their frenzy. Don't get caught up in her stupidity. Don't get caught up in his accusations. Don't get caught up in their attitude towards you. Don't trip it. Pray it. Don't trip it. You hear me? That's, that's your word for these last days. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears sharp. And keep your spirit controlled by the Holy Spirit rather than your pride. Your pride will take you down, baby. Pride cometh before fall and a haughty heart before destruction. Don't let your heart be haughty. Don't let your pride rear its ugly head. Leave it alone. Your reputation, your name, the way they treat you, leave it alone. It's not yours to handle. Leave it alone. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He'll not suffer you to be moved. You don't have to try to make it on your own. God is more than able. All right. God bless you. Be encouraged. I know it's not a long word, but I hope it's enough to sustain you through this week and keep reflecting back on it. Some, some of these messages I bring, some of you need to play them over and over again. You don't read a scripture in, a, in one time and never go back to it. So some of these messages, you need to go back and go through some of the, I got 1900 videos and you need to go through some of them and say, what do I need to hear today? There's a whole lot of word out there if, and, and words that other people have preached, not just me. But build yourself up in the most holy faith and put your little idols in the trash. Idols of pride, idols of fear, idols of reputation, idols of image, all this stuff. They're idols. It's idol worship. Anytime you got to come forward and Put your fist down and say, no, I ain't taking it. Jesus took it. And you ain't? Think about that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless. Pour your spirit out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And right now we're going to have a testimony from Rashad. He said that he had a testimony pertaining to that very same thing. So I went to work. And I noticed, I don't know why, I honestly don't know why, but I get agitated, I was get. I was getting agitated, I was just agitated that day for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I bind, I rebuke myself, I'm buying that, but it still didn't go away, it was still there. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm at work and I'm doing my job, I take a delivery and I leave because I didn't, because normally it, it basically rotates. When a person comes in, whoever that's in, uh, that's been there the longest, they take the next delivery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went to work and no one was there, so I thought everybody was gone. So I'm out on the road and I get a text message from someone. And they said to me, you need to what you need to pay attention to your for your taking orders and just leaving because I was in the store. Which this person that sent that to me, I did not see them anywhere in the store. I literally thought that I was the only person there and I thought that everybody else was out on the road. Mm -hmm. Because the system is not accurate. It does not tell you who's in and who's out accurately. It does not do it accurately. So, yeah. So I text the person back. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I did, it wasn't intentionally. I didn't know, you know, what, you know, that. And you know me. Like, you know I'm not going to do nothing like that. Like, that's not, you know, I'm not trying to take money out of nobody's pocket or anything like that. So, like I said to you earlier, I was getting, I was already agitated for no reason. Like already just annoying for no reason, mm -hmm. and I, you know, and so uh, uh, and I text them there, and they tell them they text me back and say, "Oh, I'm just saying that you should have just did this and so, such and such." So I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, wow, okay," um, and I, you, you know, I kind of, I kind of prayed about it, and I, you know, 
went ahead and went back to the job because I was out on the road at the time. And when I went into the job, I didn't say nothing to that person. I just kind of like just, you know, like I said, I was praying and stuff. I was like, God, help me. In the name of Jesus, please help me, Father. So I'm already agitated for no reason. And then plus this person is sad as if I tried to do that, which I did. Um, I went to the counter where they're, where you pick your orders up. And it was a girl, another person there. She, I had, I ran into this, I, we, I, we had a little, a comp, not really a confrontation thing, but we had something the week before where she was bagging up the food incorrectly. And all I did was nicely say, you know, walk over there and let her know how you're supposed to do it because that's, you know, not even just for your sake, but it's for the customer's sake that you can't just throw food in the bag. You have to bag it up correctly, especially with this whole virus going around because that's germs. You land food on top of containers that have been out. You know what I mean? So you have to cover stuff up. But I didn't explain it like that. I just said, hey, put this like that and then put it, you know, I was saying it so nice. And she stopped me and said, don't tell me how to do my job. I got this. And she patted me on my shoulder. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I'm just trying to tell you, you know. And she's like, I, I, I don't need to hear it. All right, that's it. I'm like, all right. And then I went and told the manager because I'm like, because she's bagging this stuff up incorrectly. And the manager didn't say anything. And the manager didn't say anything to her. The manager told me I need to smile. I said, what? <laughs> smile? First of all, I got a mask on. And second of all, what they got to do with me smiling? Like, I'm like, what? <clears throat> that didn't, so I, I knew at that point it was an attack. It was an attack. And that was last week. So fast forward to yesterday. Um, so that same person that I was just talking about, she was at the rec at the counter where I big picked the food up. And she pointed at the bag that was supposed to be a delivery. I picked the bag up and I looked at it. I said, wait, this, and I was, like I told you, I was already agitated for no reason. And the way she told, the way she pointed at the bag, it's just like, no, you take this bag. That's how she was talking to me. She's like, nah, no, it's this bag. You don't do that. You take this bag. I said, this is not even a delivery. This is a pickup. This is for a customer that's inside the store. And then I set it down. And like you just said, Pat, and I'm explaining, I'm telling y'all this testimony because I, at that moment, at that point, I kind of failed. Because for one, I was already being ag I was already agitated from earlier from the person telling me that I took their delivery and all of that, and then now this girl talking to me like I'm you know just being rude. And I told her, I said, first, and I said this at the, in the middle of the store. Customers probably heard me. I said, "You are very disrespectful. You are very rude." I said it to her just like that because I was in my emotions. The enemy was attacking me yesterday because I forgot I to tell, tell y'all this. That happened to me between the person telling me I didn't take the, I took the delivery and between this girl at the counter, that happened in less than 30 minutes. That that happened within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Within in, in the same, it, it happened so quick. Like mm -hmm. literally one minute this, next minute that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what in the world? It was happening so quick. I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is an attack. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyways, I told her that and she said, Whoa, you're being, like she kind of turned around and said, "Oh no, you're being rude." And I'm like, I'm and I, I, and I just walked away. I just took the order that I was supposed to take and I walked away. And as I was bagging up my order, putting it, you know, getting ready to deliver it, she 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 walks out and says, and she says it loud. She like, "You didn't even do what I told you to do. I told you to sit this bag out there on the counter." I'm like, wow. I couldn't believe, I'm like, wow. Like, just how you just said that. You just said that it's going to happen in front of your face. And you're going to be like, well, what? Wow. How did that happen? Or, That's exactly what happened to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I couldn't. I'm like, first of all, I don't start nothing with no. See, I'm a person that don't start anything with nobody. I'm a bug. I'm like, why is this happening to Like, what? They don't even make any sense. I'm nice. It doesn't matter if you're nice. It doesn't matter it, it, it's, it, it's, when it's an attack, when it's the enemy, you're going to know it's the enemy because you literally did nothing to even cause this mm -hmm. to happen. You mm -hmm. literally you didn't do anything. I don't, like, what? Why are you coming at me with that kind of energy? Mm -hmm. But I, I know that this person, you could tell who's a Christian, you could tell who's a believer, who, who's not a believer, who's walking for Christ, who's trying to walk right because the enemy can use them that easily like that. But I'm going to tell you how I, how I turned this over. No, I'm not going to say I. I'll rebuke that. I'm going to tell you what God did, what God put in my heart to do. Y'all may not agree with what I did, but I just felt like I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, 
I'm going to try to be a light in this world. I want to allow God to use me. What I did was, with the first person with that issue with the delivery and taking her order, I was supposed to see, I did was I calculated the mileage, seeing how far it was from the store and whatever, and I and I added that on to the tip that I was given, and I gave it to her. I, I, said, I would have done that too. Yeah, I would have done said, that too. I, I, I said, I apologize. I'm sorry. I did, it, she's like, oh, it wasn't no big deal. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal because you had to, you sat there and texted me. You had That's you right. your whole, on that one little delivery, it wasn't a big deal, but you went texting me saying all that. So it wasn't right. a big deal. Right. But right. I gave her, I gave her the money. That's right. You know? And I humbled myself because then I tell you that. Now the next one is with the girl. With the, she has a, she has a rude attitude. Mm -hmm. But she telling a person they're being rude is not failing. Sometimes you j just have to say it. But just the way I said it probably was in a confrontational way. Because, I, like I told you, I don't know what the hell. But mm -hmm. I, and I feel like you just remember, I, I overcame my, the, the feeling that I had of agitation. I overcame it by doing what I, that I just did. Right. What I did was I humbled myself. Mm -hmm. And I walked right in there. Walked right up to her. I said, you know what? I apologize for how I came up to you earlier. I am sorry for doing that. Mm-hmm. And I saw a glow because she normally has like literally her eyes look dark looking and she looks angry, mm -hmm. like really extremely bad attitude. Tell yeah. me, yeah. she kind of glowed a little bit. She mm -hmm. kind of like smiled and mm -hmm. she said, I accept your apology. Mm -hmm. Right. And I walked away and that was that. And, and, and it didn't bother me. No, it didn't bother me. After right. that, it took that first, it bothered me mm -hmm. even when I was praying. But the moment mm -hmm. I made that choice to humble myself, no matter how I look like, I may look like the weak one, whatever you want to call it. Right. I said, you know what? I'm going to just apologize. And I did it, and I went about my day, and my day went from bad at that moment to good. It was a uh, rest of the day was good. Yep. Rest yep. of the day was good. See? See? So, so you did get the victory. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. And I, you know, I thought in my head, and I was praying. I was praying to God the rest of the day. I was asking him to cover me and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and you know what I said in my mind? Huh. Take that, Satan. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> That's I right. Said, yeah, take that. Yeah, you trying to start some mess in here? Take that. And I covered the door. I um, got had my whole, whole little oil. Right. Nobody saw me do this, but I dabbed a little bit of my finger. And when I went to walk back in the store, because Aretha and them, I spoke with Aretha and them too in the mm -hmm. midst of that. Mm -hmm. And she told me that, you know, pray, you know, they were kind of talking to me and stuff. But I touched the door, that side of the door, and I said, no demons come in this store today in the name of Jesus. There you uh, go. You, any demon that tries to walk in this store, you mm -hmm. can't come in here. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And the rest of the day was calm. Thank That's you for testimony. sharing that. 